you probably know this already, but one of the most important things that we need to do when we're starting to um, design an experiment is to work out what are we going to include in our experiment. So we need an inventory list of all the drivers that might influence what we're interested in. And in case you haven't seen it already, there's an excellent video as part of this series by Philip Boyd that addresses how do you generate that inventory list and how do you begin to tease apart what you might be interested in. So I recommend you look at that if you haven't seen it already. But let's assume that I've already done that and I'm interested in the impacts of PCO2, which is going to go up with climate change. I'm interested in the effects of oxygen, which is probably going to go down in the area where I work in Scandinavia. And I'm interested in the effects of freshening because the salinity is likely to go down there too. So I've got my three factors. I've got ambient and future uh, PCO2. I've got ambient and future oxygen. I've got ambient and future salinity. So I have a two by two by two design, which is two cube. That's eight treatment combinations. It's a traditional fully factorial ANOVA. I can do that. But realistically, I know that there's a whole bunch of interesting things that are going to be going on between the PCO2 of today and the PCO2 of the future. I know that the response to oxygen is probably not going to be linear. And realistically, I'm not too sure about the response to salinity. So I might want to include more than just two levels of each one of those. And let's say for the sake of argument that I'm really interested in PCO2. So let's say I'm going to pick five levels. I might pick pre-industrial ambient and then a value for 2100 perhaps and maybe one in between and one for the far future so that I've got five different levels of PCO2. So then I've got five levels of that. Realistically, if I'm going to look at the response norm, if I want to get a decent curve out for how the response looks to different levels of oxygen or different levels of hypoxia actually because the oxygen oxygen's going down, then I'm going to need at least three points. So let's say that we're going to have five of those as well. And just for completeness sake, we'll have five salinities. Why not? So we've got five by five by five. So suddenly my two cubed experimental design has moved to five cubed experiments. Uh, experimental treatment combinations, which is 125. And here's 125 treatment combinations all stuck together, five by five by five. There's 125 bottles here. I figure that I might just, with the response variables that I'm working with, I might just be able to measure everything that I need to measure in the time available using this design. But it's not even replicated. I only have one of each treatment combination here. So how on earth am I going to replicate this? One option is just to take this design and do it unreplicated this week. Now my experiment is going to take me about three days, four days, plus some setup and takedown. So I can probably do one experiment in a week. So I can run this this week. Now, an important rider to all of this. We've set this up so that this looks like here's one treatment that's increasing, here's another treatment that's increasing, here's another treatment that's increasing. The colors all match. You can see it really nice and clearly. That's the whole point. I would never run the experiment this way. These bottles are all closest to the window. These ones are all closest uh, to the corridor over there. These ones are in shade. These ones are in light. These ones are under my armpit. God knows what's going on there. You wouldn't do it this way, right? You'd randomize all of these. So don't do it this way, but it's illustrative. So I can do it this week, get my data, and then I do it again next week, get some more data. I do it again the week after, get some more data. And that replication in time is going to introduce a bunch of variability into the experiment. But realistically, that's OK, because that variability just goes along with sampling error and normal noise and contributes to the error term in our subsequent analysis. The advantage of replicating in time is that you can replicate it within reason as many times as you like. You can almost keep going until you've got enough statistical power to detect the effects that you want to, want to detect. So if we're not going to replicate in time, but we want to find some other way to run our experiment to reduce this 125 treatment combinations to something more manageable that we can replicate within one time, within the experiment, how do we do that? And one obvious option is to say, well, realistically, am I interested in what happens in this bottle here or in that treatment combination that's right there? Or is what I'm really interested in what happens in this primary vector here and this primary vector here 
and this primary vector there, that is the three major factors, this is our PCO2, our oxygen and our salinity, and maybe the combination of those three, the diagonal that goes through the middle of this cube that starts down here and ends up here. Because that's going to tell me the individual effects of salinity, the individual effects of oxygen, the individual effects of PCO2, and the combined effects of those three. It won't tell me the two-way interactions, but realistically, I might not be interested in that. So, what might that look like? Well, with the aid of my magic wand, So now we have the three primary vectors, the PCO2, the oxygen, and the salinity. So we can work out what each of those is doing independently. But we only have the three-way interaction between those, which is our projection into the future of the combined effects of PCO2, oxygen, and salinity progressively into the future. So this design gives us a scenario into the future and some basic mechanistic understanding, but we're still lacking the two way interactions between these variables so we lack some mechanistic understanding of this design. If that last design was too big then we can ask ourselves if we're going to reduce this and we don't want to know what's in each one of these different treatment combinations what do we really want to know? And that's really a question of do we want this whole design or do we just want to know what's likely to happen for example in scenarios into the future where this is today, this is our ambient condition. So this is today's PCO2, today's oxygen, today's salinity. And this is a future acidified, hypoxic, fresher world. So realistically, what we want to know is not even these major vectors and the diagonal, it's just the diagonal. It's a scenario. Yes, we've confounded hypoxia and salinity and PCO2, but if all we want to do is find out what's going to happen in a future ocean, and we're pretty sure that that's what that future ocean is going to look like, that's all we need, right? And we can easily replicate that because that's one, two, three, four, five different treatment combinations. So, with the aid of my magic wand again, So what we have left here is the three-dimensional diagonal through the matrix. So we have the lowest value of PCO2, the next highest value, the third highest, the fourth highest, and so on. But these are confounded with the same equivalent values of oxygen and salinity. So we have a scenario. There's only five treatment combinations. We can easily replicate this and get a really good idea of how these co-varying drivers are going to influence our response into the future, but we know nothing from this design about how each of those drivers operate independently. Another way that we might be able to reduce the size of this design and thereby enable replication is to go back and again ask ourselves the question, what is it that we really want to know? Now if you remember, right back at the beginning I said I was really interested in the effects of PCO2. That's why I wanted five different levels of PCO2 to get some good resolution on PCO2. And then I got it carried away and went for five levels of oxygen and five levels of salinity and we wound up with this problem that you can see before us. But if what I'm really interested in is the effect of PCO2, then I could maybe keep my five levels of PCO2 and then just collapse the other two variables, salinity and oxygen or hypoxia, into one variable, let them co-vary. There could be more drivers in there as well, but I'm just, I've just got those extra two in this. So if we were going to generate one of those collapsed designs, as they're called, which other people have used, Philip Boyd and his co-workers have published, uh, published on this, and you can find the reference on the website, what would one of those collapsed designs look like if we were going to turn this into a collapsed design? So, with the aid of my magic wand, once again, Okay, so if we want to reduce this even further, we can ask ourselves the question once again, what's the primary driver that we're interested in here? And in this case, it's PCO2, it's this vertical aspect. 
So we're going to collapse the other two drivers in this case. We've got oxygen in this direction and salinity in this direction. So we're going to use all five values of PCO2, but at ambient oxygen and salinity, and all five values of PCO2 at future oxygen and salinity, and we're just going to get rid of everything else. So now we have all five values of PCO2 at ambient oxygen and salinity, and all five values of PCO2 at future oxygen and salinity, and we've lost everything else from the design. Here we've got 10 treatment combinations. We've retained our resolution in terms of PCO2, and we've lost everything else to do with the covariance between oxygen and salinity. But if you want to simplify this even more, particularly if you need more replication, 10 treatment combinations is quite a lot. We can cut this down to four by removing these middle three PCO2s so that we have ambient PCO2 and future PCO2, ambient and future, at each of ambient oxygen and salinity and future oxygen and salinity. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we have that collapsed design that Boyd et al. used. We have ambient oxygen and salinity at ambient PCO2 and future PCO2, and future oxygen and salinity at ambient PCO2 and future PCO2. The Boyd et al. example collapsed more drivers together than just oxygen and salinity, but the design is essentially the same. We have four treatment combinations, and we can do lots of replication with this. So now you've got some options on how we might be able to deal with either replicating our grand design with five levels of PCO2, five levels of oxygen, five levels of salinity, or whatever drivers you might be interested in. You might be able to replicate that in time, or you might not be able to replicate that in time. But realistically, before you decide which one of those you want to do, you need to ask yourself again the question, why do I want to know? What is it that I really want to understand? If I'm interested in the mechanics of how PCO2 and oxygen and salinity influence the response variable in my system, and I really want to understand all the nuances in there, then maybe this design, this full 125 treatment combinations design is what I need to do. And then I'm going to have to replicate it in time, or maybe get a better grant or persuade all my colleagues to come and help me run it three times at the same time. I don't know, whatever your solution might be. You might, depending on the system, be able to replicate this in space at the same time, but it's pretty unlikely. You've got to be able to measure all of these containers. So that's one option, and that's probably, realistically, the only option if you really do want to know absolutely everything about the different combinations within here. But there are other options too. We've seen, for example, the major vectors, which look at just the primary drivers in the system, the three primary axes in this cube, and the diagonal combination of those. So that will tell us some mechanistic information. It will tell us what each one of those three drivers, PCO2, oxygen, and salinity, are doing in, in our system, and what the combination of those into the future will do. So it tells us something that's sort of like a halfway house between, those, um, those, between the mechanistic option and the next option, which is just to look at the diagonal all the way from down at ambient to future, where we just looked at that 3D diagonal vector. That's simply looking at a future scenario. So that's putting our oxygen, our PCO2, and our salinity together. They're co-varying at values that are projected for the future, and we don't know which one of those is driving the response. But that might not be interesting if what we want to do is inform policy. If we want to say, so how is a future ocean going to influence the respiration rate of whatever it might be, then we can do that with a design like that. It has disadvantages because we don't know everything else that's going on, but we've only got five treatment combinations in there, so we can replicate that really well and get a lot of statistical power. And then lastly, there's slightly more complex designs like the collapse design that we showed you where you take the driver that you're really interested in, PCO2, and you collapse the other two and just do a two-way design where the other factor is actually a combined vector of in our case, salinity and oxygen, but it could have other drivers in there as well. Again, you confound those extra drivers. You don't know which one of those is working, but if you're really interested in the effects of, in our case, PCO2, then that's probably going to tell you what you need to know. So 
pros and cons. Now, each one of those different designs has got different analysis options and has different implications for how much replication you need and how easy it is to get out information. Each of them also has implications for what you're not going to find out, so you need to think hard about what the design's not going to tell you as well. I'm not going to deal with either of those, but Peter Dillingham has got an excellent video on how you take the next step and look at analyzing these different kinds of designs. I recommend you watch that.